might not know me, uh, but you might and don't know it. Um, so I started doing Let's Plays uh, back when my buddy introduced me to Minecraft and, and to CNN's uh, series of Let's Plays. And so that's where I started. And uh, then I heard uh, a little song called TNT uh, by Captain Sparkles. Um, and I was like, I can do that. Because uh, I grew up on Weird Al, and uh, parodies was my bread and butter as a kid. Um, and so my very first parody was a song called Poo Block, um, which is a parody of TikTok by Kesha. Um, it was auto-tuned all the heck on purpose. Um, and it did okay. It was actually my first video that ever capped out, and I thought I broke YouTube. I didn't know what was going on. Um, it scared me, actually. Like, it, it, back in the day, I was tweeting to people that I knew. I was like, did I do something wrong? What's happening? My views aren't counting. Because um, I, so, I was so new. It was, it's, it's cute now. Um, and then after that, I realized, like, so I like pop music okay, but what, when I'm at home, what I'm listening to is rap music. I love rap music so much. Um, and, uh, and that's not believable when you look at me, but it's true. Um, and so I talked to a buddy of mine, uh, some YouTubers I had met, so a guy named Avidia Zen, and I was like, hey, um, here's this song I've been playing with. Do you think I should, I should run with this? Um, and it was a little song called Mine and Diamonds, uh, which is a parody of Black and Yellow. Anybody heard that before? Anybody in the room? Yeah. Yeah, Black and Yellow, but have you heard Mine and Diamonds? Uh, that's me. Um, so I decided that, okay, from now on I'm doing rap music, because there's not a single person on YouTube um, that's doing rap music worth anything. And so I'm like, that's what I'll do. I'll do periods and that's how I'll make it different. So I did Mine and Diamonds, I did a song called All I Do Is Dig. Um, I've done, uh, I've done a song called Digging Problems, which is probably my favorite song ever. Um, and yeah, I just I was like, I'm going to do this rap thing. And uh, it, it, it took off. Uh, last time I checked, uh, Mine and Diamonds was in the three-ish million views count. And it was really cool. I'm really excited. And thanks, guys, for that if you watched it. Um, yeah, cool. Um, and, uh, and I'm significantly smaller channel than these guys, but I... I just, I, I'm blown away by YouTube and what it does, and it's pushed me into all sorts of musical expressions that has even led to me doing original music now, working on an album, so it's crazy. YouTube. I'm going to this up one way to uh, tell it to my right, Dry Bear, who uh, actually works at high Studios where I work, recent acquisition. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your story, why you started doing YouTube, and then I guess the esports aspect of it as well? I had the newest YouTuber out of all of these down the line, um, kind of just growing out of it. But basically, my story is I was going to schools in college, um, going to become a computer engineer. Um, it was kind of like software and hardware development, that kind of idea. Uh, I was a big MOBA fan. I was always into Heroes of Europe, but about three years I played League of Legends, Dota. Um, and then one day I came on this ad and it was uh, selling Spike. Um, so once I saw that, I started playing, I fell in love immediately. Um, the first thing that I thought is uh, I was playing a character that everyone just was terrible at. It was the worst character they ever played, but I was good at it and I wanted to teach people. So I made a guide about it and started growing a little bit. And ever, ever since then, I was kind of committed to it, but it never really took off. Uh, what happened for me, actually, is more for the esports side of things. Um, and so what I would do to try to engage my viewers during the videos when I was dead for 60 seconds, I would cast my teammates, like sportscasters on that style, and try to just engage my viewers that way. After a while, people started to like it. Pushing towards casting in general, so sometimes I cast along this guy uh, on, on stage and, and that kind of stuff. And that's really what drove me towards the live part of it. But I still maintain the YouTube behind it. So probably the youngest out of all these, but really more about the MOBAs. And it's just once you get that moment. And for me, I think the biggest thing for me is the fact that it kind of derailed my whole life. Um, I was, you know, I was in college, I was studying so hard, and the second I started doing it, I fell in love immediately. It's just the engagement with fans, hearing people. Feedback, organizing a lot of events, that kind of stuff. Um, and immediately after graduating, I came into Ohio Studios to be the manager for Smite, uh, while also doing the esports side of things to keep my YouTube um, and Twitch and that kind of stuff. I also started uh, leaning on more of my background. I started on a website um, and it's more on the stats side of things, so more web development for the game itself. And really, it all just kind of came together all at once and, and just changed my whole life. So there you go. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Yeah, let's do this. Great team. So, I quickly want to do um, time check real quick, so we're about 20 minutes in now, guys. Um, I want to go down the line again, uh, and this time we can just go chronologically down the line here. And kind of talk about, I, I guess, Rory, less you, but if, if 
YouTube or content creation is your primary income source, I want to hear a little bit about kind of the moment when you realized that the tipping point had been reached and you could not do the other things and start making content. Like kind of what feelings that evoked and, and how risky you felt or was it kind of the most natural thing in the world? So let's start with Caveman here if you're ready to roll. Yeah, um, so I, I've been working uh, primarily doing YouTube for the past two and a half years. Um, I've been able to, to sustain myself from YouTube for about the past two years. And it's, it's really, really cool. I wasn't ever really expecting to play video games for a living, but that's kind of what I do. And uh, that's a really cool job. And I'm really, really grateful. It's really just amazing. Um, before I was doing YouTube, I was working at this cafeteria. Uh, and I'm never eating at that cafeteria again because uh, <laughs> you learn some things. So, I um, eat there every day now. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone that's worked at a fast food place knows. So, yep. um, really, it's just a great thing because I was graduating high school where I went, uh, my YouTube career took off. And, <laughs> yeah, so, like, I literally got really lucky, and um, I'm just really, really happy with where I am right now. Uh, the, yeah, definitely something you said that I think is very important to some degree, I think almost for none of us to forget, is that there is a great deal of luck that goes into it. Uh, sometimes it is. Not that it's not talent as well, it takes a lot of work and talent, but yeah, it's... Sometimes it's just that bit of luck of being in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, tons of people try to be internet critics now. Uh, I just happened to start when there was only like one or two. And even that was just starting to get a little momentum. And then I, I started getting on board. And then, you know, I was like three or four or something like that just starting it while this wave was starting. Um, but in terms of like when it become, when I will become a full time thing, uh, really when you get the first page. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know it sounds silly, but I mean, it's like there's pretty much, like I said, there needed to be about three months of doing these videos and not doing the other job, and I had to save up money, I had to look over the finances, can I do this, if it doesn't work, will I be destroyed forever, or whatever, and it's, it, it looked like it was doable, like, okay, it's still a risk, but it's a calculated risk, so when that first paycheck actually comes in, you know this is real, it's like, okay, and then, you know, it's like, Maybe it's just a fluke. Maybe wait for the next one to come in, the next one to come in. You know, it's like suddenly you're supplying yourself better than you did in the old job. So you say, okay, this is this is worth keeping. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of it too is that I originally went to school to learn how to do film. I wanted to be a filmmaker and stuff, but as I got older, I realized I, I didn't want to go the Hollywood route. I, did, I don't think I was that person to deal with that crowd. And I give a great deal of respect to anyone that can deal with that crowd because it's it's a lot of double talk and backstabbing and arguing. It's not easy or fun. Uh, so it takes a lot of dedication. So I went to become an illustrator, and I was doing this as a hobby. And I just said to myself, okay, if I can't, if I can't be a filmmaker for as a living like my life wants to, you know what, just, I'll settle for anything that I can do that's creative. I'll settle for that, you know? So I tried doing illustration with clients and stuff. And when this came in and you just had some control over it, I think you're just all the more thankful when you realize this could have just as easily not happened. I mean, this could just be whatever. I could be doing stuff for clients and maybe even I even that, just work a desk job or something and, you know, just try to get whatever creativity you can here or there. So it's like, it's, I'm never not thankful for this job. It's really like, you know, it really is a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, that, that can't be real. 
<laughs> that can't be real. It's, that's not, no, no way. So, um, I think it was kind of like, I don't think I was actually, I don't know, it's kind of like I wanted to just do this anyway. Like, I wanted to do YouTube anyway because I was just out of high school and I didn't really have much to do at the time. I mean, like, yeah, I could go to college, but you know, I usually want, most, most of my friends are going to wait like a year or two uh, until like they just decide what they want to like major in or actually do in college. And while I was just testing, you're like, mm. I was like, all right, let's do videos. So I moved out like $100 to my name. Originally, I just kind of was waiting for that paycheck to come in to pay rent. And um, so I waited for that. And uh, I just kind of did YouTube, not really expecting to get all that much money. I, I kind of started out just doing you know, what I wanted to do, because I just loved making people laugh and entertaining people. So um, I guess when I discovered that I could really, really make a living out of it was Right after that summer, I exploded. I was just kind of like, all right, I might as well start figuring out what to do with with everything and start like incorporating and making it into like a, a brand and kind of kind of uh, taking this little creation that I had and like turning it into something huge, turning it into something I could I could literally sustain myself off of. So probably around uh, that summer was when it happened.
when I started doing this, it was absolutely just a hobby. It was a creative outlet, something you know, I haven't been able to really get together with my friends and then film things in years. So it was like, that was, was like, hey, something I can express myself and do creatively. Um, and I was, I, had, I was working a full-time job still and sort of doing this just like a hobby on the side, which, you know, it was paying a, a little bit. Basically, it was paying enough for me to sustain my hobby, which is important, you know, because I would put money into it to improve the show and props and better equipment and whatnot, but it was always sort of a self-sustaining thing. Um, I got laid off towards the beginning of the year, uh, so I sort of had to focus, re reshift uh, into, you know, now that I have more time to put into it, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, trying to get more videos out, get more views, and turn it into something, you know, a bit more, because it's, it's definitely feasible.
the, the first time, I know every single time somebody asks me what I do, and I never give the same answer because I still haven't found the one that sounds right. You know, I, because it's always like, well, I'm a, uh, you know, I, I uh, make funny videos online. Oh, so you live here, folks. All right, I'm, uh, I'm an online producer. Oh, so you're in porn. <laughs> I, I always like never know how to explain it because like no matter what you say to a person when when you say Minecraft they're instantly gonna think you know children's game yeah. so like I don't know why because you know I've seen like college grads like Seth playing make literally working computers in Minecraft right. and it's like like people can like literally make anything in this game that's why it's so popular and so. Like, you can't just go to the person and be like, yeah, I make Minecraft videos on the internet. Because, like, they're just going to look at you like, I'm yeah. <laughs> sure you're joking, I So I've come, to, I've come to say this one thing over and over again. Well, I make videos on the internet that get paid through ad revenue that play on top of the videos. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's respectful. I'm like, yeah, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I... So you do porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, do. I, um... So it's even, it feels even harder for me because not only do I have to say Minecraft, but in the same breath, I also have to say rapper. <laughs> and people like, this is, I, I, this is exactly how it goes down there. So what do you do? And I'm like, well, I write rap songs about Minecraft. They're like, I'm sure you do. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I do. And they're like, Minecraft, I think my daughter or my son plays that. And I'm like, yeah, so do I. And a lot of older people, like, calm down. And they're like, and then, then they go like, you're a really white dude with a beard, like wearing an old man hat. What do you do? Like, you don't rap. There's no way. And so then inevitably, like, they want me to freestyle, which I don't do. Um, and so what happens is I, pull, I have like, I have my music loaded on my phone for the sole purpose of being like, yeah, this is. And they don't ever believe me. They're like, mm, sure, uh huh, cool. <laughs> and like I said, my grandma does it. She doesn't get it. She she has rap music anyway, but she like, so what? You do what? What do you, I have a video where I'm like, I'm pretty much having a fake conversation with my grandmother on my channel. Um, it's called A Day in the Life of a Minecraft YouTuber. <laughs> and it's just like constantly getting interrupted, like, I'm editing. No, no, it's not, it's not on YouTube yet. It's editing. You can see it tomorrow. No, no, I'm editing, and then I gotta rent, never mind. And it, that's my life. <laughs> I've, uh... I've taken the, the easy, the, the way that I've managed to get it across to most people that, that seems to work is I've come to refer to it as a bridge ripping. <laughs> like there's a term ripping, like, and I say, they say, no. I was like, Mystery Science Theater, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Except, yeah, like that. Except I also summarize the movie in the format of a review. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs>
Killing butter or we're killing butter when you eat it? Yes. But well, what butter are you overeating? What? <laughs>
they'll refer to them as being famous on the internet, like there is something different between being famous on the internet and just being famous in general. So do you feel like that's a fair distinction to make? Um, I would agree that I would be famous in real life when I'm on the freeway and there's paparazzi chasing me down on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, oh yeah, that's, that's me right here. Yeah, I thought you missed a little very normal. Well, I don't see how it's any different from saying, like, you know, he's he's a famous TV star, movie star, singer. Right? I mean, it'll be like, you're just famous! You know, I mean, yeah. the, the <laughs> ones that are just famous, you call this porn just you know, or have sex tape, you know, like, I don't think we'd all be famous from that.
Well, my name is Christian, and this is uh, my YouTube partner, Corey. We really want to bring it back to how to make money online. So I'm going to end it on that. Uh, first of all, you guys are my role models. You make money telling fart jokes and playing video games on the internet. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, Corey, you go first in Israel. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Corey. I'm not an alcoholic. Um, first and foremost, we make a lot of anime and long reviews. We also do movie reviews. Uh, but since on YouTube, we want to use movie clips to help illustrate our commentary and make some of the jokes pop. But since we're on YouTube, we can't do that. Is there some sort of magic loophole that we do not know about? Or should we gravitate to a more traditional website or video sharing site? Well, I know. I'm still in the but I see a lot of people. Usually, uh, like the, if you flip the video, like sometimes throws it. Um, I know if you overlay a lot of things over it or something, or just crop out certain parts of the movie uh, that you, know, you want to emphasize or something, that might help. But um, other than that, um, you can't obviously post old footage of the video because it is kind I always do dramatic reenactments. They're just like really crap. Like I did one about X Men and I was Magneto with tinfoil. Uh, I'd say that it, be sure it changed for either a review or something satirical, so at least the laws on your side, but they still take it down. It just depends on how hard they're looking for it and how much they want to yank it on the foot when it comes down to the student and play it. Yeah, and like what he said, if you're doing a review, um, then you should be fine because you know, the law is on your side. So sure. the sure. content ID system is what you want to avoid, and to avoid that, you would slow down the joke a little bit or speed it up and then you can just put a little bit of uh, music on there and you should be okay. Yeah, because we just see so many uh, bigger people like the you do so much. Well, they still get taken down sometimes. They do? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's still going on. We've constantly, I don't want to say in fear, but we definitely have it over our head and I think we simplify our content sometimes. Just a healthy fear. Yeah. It's a healthy fear. Yeah. It's a healthy fear. That's the thing, we're always releasing videos, but we're always trying to walk on glass and not look away like John was saying. Thanks, Paul. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. I actually have some questions. Adam, what? 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 Smaller shows that you got into the main room. How do you do that exactly? Well, how do I do the smaller shows with the bigger shows? Yeah, like the bomb reviews. I, I put more effort into the larger shows with those get more hits, and then the other one probably do well, they'll do it well because it's kind of great. So they sort of, you know, help the accounts and keep bringing in money, but the main source is still in the South. Yeah, the focus on the main show is kind of other shows help supplement, uh, keep content going, because if you don't have content going, then otherwise people forget. Sure. Thank you.
Oh yeah, about 20. <laughs> yeah, honestly. But so what, because of time, time is cut down, so what I try to do is that I try to search a survey against the ones that are like, yeah, these are okay, these are, you know, only my good. Like, okay, this is the one I really want to do. I really want to get done. So like, that's what I'm working on now to sci-fi. And it's taken me over a year, and it's still going, but it's, that's the one I'm still working on. So, and after that, I'm trying to move on. So, there's several, you got to give up on some things. I thought it was demo already. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, so that's going to do it for our panel here. Thanks so much for joining us. You'll notice there's a lot of other people in the room. Uh, I'll let everyone else sign up themselves. If you, uh, I, I don't know what the policy is, I'll bump us to the table. What do you, you guys have anything you want to say before we, we kick off? Thank you guys. Any, any final words for your adoring panel?